The large language model is one of the most powerful ideas in technology. We've seen it pass the bar exam, ace medical licensing tests, and even discover new drug-like molecules from scratch. I'd see it used for all these world-changing purposes. But using it, I wondered about something simpler. Something more selfish. Can I use it to go viral? So how do we even begin to teach a machine something as abstract as what makes a YouTube title good? We can't just feed it a book of YouTube best practices. Such a book doesn't exist, but if I had to define what makes a good YouTube title, it's one that makes you curious, but that's really hard to define, that's so abstract. We also can't code every condition that makes something clickable. And that's because human curiosity is a gut feeling. It's an abstract concept. And so what we need is an approach that can recognize patterns. One that can look at thousands of titles that have worked and say, oh, that's the pattern. Let me learn from that. And I think this is exactly the type of problem that fine tuning excels at. So what is fine tuning? It's actually quite simple. And to demonstrate, we're going to imagine a world class musician. Now, this musician, they've been training their entire lives and they can play any piece of music you put in front of them. But the moment that you ask them to play something like improvisational jazz, well, they can play something that sounds like jazz, but they're not capturing the real essence of it because they know the rules, but they don't really understand the deeper pattern that goes into these. So fine tuning is if I took this genius musician and I put them in a room and I told them only listen to jazz for an entire month. We wouldn't be teaching them how to play piano. They already know how to do that. We're teaching them how to swing and we're forcing them to learn a new specific style until it becomes second nature. Theoretically, they can stop sounding like a classical player trying to sound like a jazz musician and just start sounding like a jazz musician. What we're building here is the exact exact same premise, except instead of a musician, we have the world's smartest language model, and instead of jazz, we have YouTube's greatest hits. But this leads us to our first problem. What is a good YouTube title in this case? Well, I could scrape my recommended feed, I could scrape my favorite channels, but that would be a really small subset of data, and even worse, what I like isn't necessarily what goes viral. And so after some research, I found my answer on Kaggle. On Kaggle, I went on to find the YouTube trending video data set, which had every trending video set since 2020. Now it had everything. The channel ID, the channel title, how many comments it got, how many likes. This was great, but there was still one problem. And that was that it had everything. The data set was 4.5 gigabytes of noise, and I needed to filter this massive file down to only the videos that actually match the content that I made. So I made this extremely simple Python file that goes through the original data set and filters out only the information we want. After the script ran, I was left with 1,425 unique videos that have trended in the category of science or technology. So I was ready to start training. Or so I thought. When I started scrolling through the data, I saw a new problem. It was full of corporate events, rocket launches, and product announcements. These videos didn't trend because of a clever title. They trended because they're news. Apple could title their video Apple Event October 13th, and it would get millions of views. No, literally, look. If my AI started learning from this, it would learn boring corporate titles instead of the actual curiosity-driven titles that we were looking for. So I needed to clean the data. At first I tried to do it manually, but that would have taken forever. And so I had a better idea. Just let the robots do it. So I wrote a new Python script, but this one was different. It imported Gemini, a large language model to act as the bouncer for my data set. I gave the AI a very specific job. I wrote a prompt that defined my gold standard. I told it, remove corporate ads, live streams, and deal guy type content, but keep videos with conflict, absurd engineering, or big questions. And then I just let it run. The script looped through all 1,425 videos. It fed the title, channel, and tags to Gemini, and Gemini sent back its decision over and over. And when it was done, it saved a new clean file with only 733 entries. This was the data set we were gonna use for training. So, did it work? The first test was on a video I was editing. I fed the transcript to my new model, it gave me a title, and I used it. In the first two hours, the video had a 15% click-through rate for my subscribers. That is insanely high, higher than I've ever seen. Now, it could be that people clicked on the video because of the thumbnail, which is also a very important part of the process. So I wanted to make sure I ran the script on every video I've ever made on my channel. And every single video that I uploaded the new title to had an increase in viewership. That may sound incredibly impressive, 
But and when I see that I replaced Animal Crossing's dialogue with a live LLM by hacking GameCube memory was replaced by the title, I replaced Animal Crossing's dialogue with AI, that makes a little more sense to me and shows me that I'm not very good at invoking curiosity and I need to continue developing that skill. I genuinely think that the model I fine tune has learned how to generate curiosity. Now, I think this video is gonna be controversial and so I'm gonna have a follow-up discussing all the nuances and thoughts of what the implications of this are. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed, like and subscribe, Mwah. Go outside.